Well over a year has now passed of global lockdowns, quarantines, changing restrictions, and most unfortunately, heartbreaking death tolls. Yet in Israel, at least, as of today, essentially all COVID restrictions have been lifted. The national infection rate failing to, falling to practically nil just six months after the start of Israel's leading vaccination campaign. Effectively, this means that apart from wearing masks indoors and maintaining certain restrictions on foreign visitors, there will be no more limits on groupings of people indoors or outdoors. All restaurants, public amenities, etc. will be opened to full capacity regardless of vaccination status. And both the green and purple ribbon qualifications for opening businesses have been abolished. Again, though, as I mentioned earlier, some restrictions will remain to keep infections from rising again. And here to discuss is Professor Nadav Davidovich from the Department of Health Systems Management at Ben Gurion University. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, first off, before we get to the limited restrictions, we've heard from several experts that it's too soon to lift all of these measures, especially those of the Green Pass. Do you agree? Uh, I think that uh, this is the right time of doing this. Uh, the rates are extremely low. Probably we almost got into herd immunity. Uh, I think also that uh, since we are very close to have vaccination for children, uh, for me it's better that uh, without uh, the Green Pass uh, we can uh, move ahead and uh, those who are against uh, vaccines, anti-vaxxers won't say that there was uh, unnecessary pressure. Uh, we had maybe a few number of cases every day. This is almost... Uh, a dream, you know, comparing to several uh, months ago. Of course, the situation is extremely different around the globe mm -hmm. because of the uh, gap in vaccination rates. Especially, this is alarming uh, the Palestinian Authority because it's our interest to have them uh, vaccinated and we don't want to have variants uh, formed. So the main uh, challenge now is outside of Israel, mm -hmm. especially at the airport and the crossing borders. All right, well, you already touched on some of these issues, but right now there are three steps specifically that Israel is taking to keep outbreaks to a minimum amidst the newly restored freedoms, uh, including protocols for isolating and testing new cases and members of their community, particularly schools, restrictions on international visitation through Ben Gurion, Interna uh, ben -Gurion Airport, like requiring negative COVID tests uh, within three days of arrival, quarantining for individuals coming from high-risk areas, et cetera, and finally, as you mentioned, potential, uh, a potential ruling on vaccinating kids aged 12 to 15, making for another 800,000 or so inoculations. First of all, I'll start with the children. Do you think it's necessary to mandate a, a child vaccination? Uh, or is it enough to maybe leave to individual parents' uh, decisions? Do we have enough vaccinations as is to, to play fast and loose with, with children? And are the other tenants, for that matter, enough to keep the infection rate low? I think uh, it's a right of uh, children and their parents who want to be vaccinated to have access. I don't think we need uh, a campaign like we did several months ago when the situation was uh, much worse. And we need to remember that uh, more than 200,000 Israelis that are above the age of uh, 50 that are much more in a high risk. So uh, that's something that we need to invest much more energy. Uh, we see the indirect effect of the vaccine. The question if we are already in herd immunity or almost there, I think it's uh, uh, mainly theoretical. Practically, we are almost in herd immunity. But again, uh, in terms of priorities, I would put more emphasis on um, persuading those who are above 50. Uh, for children, um, I have a son who is uh, 14 years old. I'll be very happy to have him vaccinated. He will be happy. And also, we need to remember that there are some families that want to travel abroad, or maybe there are people that are immunocompromised at their home. So I think we need to leave it as a personal uh, decision, family uh, decision. There is no urgent, uh, you know, situation that... Uh, uh, like it was uh, several months ago in January, it was a horrible month, for example. And then uh, we need to persuade everybody. Now we are in a very different situation. All right, Professor Nadav Davidovich, thank you so much for your insights. Thanks a lot.